G'day mateys and welcome back to the Down Under Gamer channel. It is the Down Under Gamer here and we are back with episode 5 of our Imperium Universalis 2.2 Alidian Empire Let's Play campaign uh, for Europa Universalis 4. Uh, so in the past episode, uh, obviously we sort of were starting to move up to um, secure the city-states around the Isthmus. Um, you know, secured like a, a little bit of territory uh, actually across the sea here on the uh, the mainland sort of peninsula of uh, Europa or uh, southern, you know, sort of southern Thracia there. Um, then uh, unfortunately our king died towards the end of the session and put us into a uh, regency council so we were very very much neutered and there was not much we could do uh, so to spare you guys the boredom of me just moving around my armies and uh, you know killing rebels and whatnot waiting for my king to come of age I have actually played it through uh, just before uh, get starting this recording um, so that our, our leader has finally just literally just come of age Age. Um, so we're going to pick it up from here um, so really in the meantime um, all that kind of happened uh, was exactly what I just said uh, there was a bunch of rebellions which I've gone around and crushed um, uh, well, what else sort of happens not really much we built a couple of shrines um, we embraced a couple of institutions uh, which if I have a look at those where are they so the institutions we got were, I believe it was Agriculture 2, which gave us Production Efficiency plus 5, and National Manpower plus 5. Uh, what was the other one? Was it Construction or was it Trade? I can't remember exactly, but there was another one, um, and it was a Level 2 um, sort of institution that we embraced. Um, honestly, it didn't really do much for us. Did nothing at all. Just sort of made our um, our research and technology a little bit faster. Um, that said, you know we've uh, sort of jumped up to level four military tech now, uh, and then we also got to uh, level three admin tech. So obviously, the next level there will give us um, you know the craftsman, the irrigation, and the quarry. Um, and, you know, diploma, diplomacy tech uh, fours are obviously going to give us the small marketplace, which is good. Uh, you know, obviously when we start getting into some of those more commercial buildings that we can sort of start doing a bit more with our economy. Uh, but if we take a real quick look around the map, um, obviously nothing really seems to be happening much in Italy from what we can see so far. Um, you know, can't see a whole lot happening over here sort of in the African sphere. Egypt again, you know, doesn't really appear to be doing a whole, mark, uh, a whole lot. One of the big things that did happen though while I was bringing uh, my, uh, my king or my emperor up to age was a huge war erupted between a massive um, Ratuian uh, coalition and they were allied with um, the Elamites and all the um, uh, Elam's um, vassal states and whatnot. Uh, and they actually came through and completely and utterly obliterated the Assyrian Empire and took them over. I believe it's one of Aratu's um, big missions, mission trees, um, and they are, it is you know invade the Assyrian Empire or you know crush the Assyrian Empire, something along those lines. Anyway, um, I, I've never actually done the mission myself, so I don't know exactly what happened. But clearly, by the looks of this. Uh, in the event of a successful war, you inherit the entire Assyrian Empire. So that has definitely made Uratu a very powerful and a very challenging regional adversary now. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. Um, but very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. So. Uh, without further ado though guys, let's jump into today's episode. Obviously our goal for today uh, will be to obviously secure Byzantium and um, secure that sort of cross strait. Um, hopefully, I, I, like I said, I, I don't know if it actually happened, whether it's this mod or, or something completely different. Uh, but hopefully get myself a little trade bonus for um, coming across the Isthmus there. Uh, and then it will be a matter of... Um, then looking at to where's next but we're certainly going to have to start moving fast and consolidating our position and, and sort of building our power um, 
I mean, Aratu's got like a bunch of rebel rebellions at the moment by the looks of it. So maybe, fingers crossed, they will um, they'll collapse. Uh, no guarantees on that though. Um, but either way, let's get to it. Uh, so obviously we are already on the speed of four. Uh, and obviously guys, if you like what we're doing, smash that subscribe button and drop this video a like. Uh, and leave your thoughts, tips, tricks, all that sort of good stuff down in the comments section below. have another rebellion that's going to pop any minute now actually um it should happen soon and that is going to be uh down here in uh Klazimene. so we might just hold for a little bit um how are we looking at the money so we don't want to spend any of that unnecessarily so we're not really going to worry too much about states there's not really much in that for me so what about this? A little bit of manpower could be useful, but here we do have a fair bit though. We've still got 32,000, so maybe not. Um, how about roads? That's actually probably a better investment. Uh, you know, more bang for bucks, so to speak. conversions coming along nicely uh, so something else while we're waiting for this rebellion to pop that I will actually go in and have a look at is obviously you've got these different um, sort of change government or government types um, so let's have a look so obviously you have an oriental monarchy uh, that gives you technology cost minus three percent your legitimacy max promoted cultures is another one okay Z strikes down soldiers uh, speaking of manpower anyway that should recover pretty quickly yes of course nearly 800 per month we make ah uh, where, where are we is that a rebellion lovely so we'll send the army in um so where are we so we have a principate that gives us stability, a stability cost modifier minus 15 land maintenance modifier is pretty good maximum government organization plus 25 that's really good uh, then we've got an Epirate Monarchy, which is a Land Force Limit Modifier, um, plus 20%, that's not bad. And Infantry Combat Ability, plus 10%, that's actually pretty good as well, especially uh, if you're playing a country like Rome in the beginning, which is a very, um, like a very infantry heavy faction. So... Dodgy monarchy, which is max government almost not bad. Cavalry to infantry ratio plus 20%. Yeah, it's okay, I suppose. Uh, if we come down, we have a triumvirate faction. So land maintenance modifier minus 20%. That's pretty good. Uh, leaders without upkeep plus three. That's actually not a bad option, given that I'm a bit of a larger power. Uh, and when you're a larger power, you have. Um, you know multiple armies uh, you want generals on them so triumvirate options actually probably a pretty good one um, 
so that's interesting and available mercenaries minus 75 percent which isn't a big issue for me because i'm not i don't really field mercenaries it's not my thing um so we've got a chinese feudalism which is national manpower modifier plus 10 maximum government organization plus five uh, and then obviously we can't get those two, but then a bureaucratic monica, a monarchy, which is admin efficiency plus five and yearly government organization plus one. Um, so I think maybe for us, hmm, this is, what are we at the moment? We're a despotic monarchy. We've discipline plus five, diplomatic relations and maximum government organization plus five. All right, so we'll probably stick with that for now, but as we get bigger, we'll probably look at something like the Principate, um, or Principate, I believe it is, um, or the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the triumvirate uh, government types, um, because obviously the bigger I get, the more armies I start to field, uh, especially you know, you're seeing uh, Aratu and the size that they're becoming, yeah, so they're instantly sort of crushing and putting down all these rebellions that they've had, so, um, it's only sort of a matter of time, really, until we come into con uh, conflict with them, so, we'll, uh, we'll prolong that as long as we can, though. Pretty darn good, actually. Argon Maonie, um, our oh, Agron Maonie. Uh, he's got uh, what, four fire, five shock, three maneuver, and three siege. He's a beast. Loving it. So he'll be responsible for leading the assault on uh, Kizikos. Kizikosk. Oh, Kizikos. Kizikos. I apologise. Uh, and then obviously. Proikonisos. My god, they don't make these names easy, do they? Um, anyway, it is what it is. Um, so naturally, obviously, me living in Taiwan is a huge struggle. Um, because I'm terrible at pronouncing shit the right way. Um, my wife is uh, an English teacher, and she's always, always, she's like a full-on like, pronunciation Nazi. Um, you know, so she's always like, no, you said it wrong, you said it wrong, do it again, do it again, and I'm just like, hey, calm down, I'm not one of your students. <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. So, but uh, let's get this war underway. Let's do it. Uh, so I can bring some allies in too, which is good. So that's okay. So I'll bring in those four. That's more than enough. That's overkill. Um, so let's get this guy across the water. So we got we got four thousand there, four thousand there. There's some big cities here in um, in Asia Minor. Uh, which is interesting. It's good, but interesting. That's good to see that my allies are guarding my two cities for absolutely no reason. But, uh, you know, good on them. So that's one thing to remember, guys. Obviously, uh, yeah, gals. Um, you know, if you if you're familiar with EU4 and the game mechanics, then obviously, you know, hey, don't don't listen to what I'm telling you because you already know. Um, but if
if you're very, very new to it, um, keep in mind every time you lose men um, or you go into a siege and you take attrition or whatever, um, what's going to happen is it's going to cost you money to reinforce your army. So if you, say, go into a potentially a uh, war that's potentially going to drag out for some time, like this one probably will for a little bit, and you've only got like five, say, ducats in the bank, um, and then it costs money to reinforce your armies. So those five ducats are going to run out very, very, very fast, um, unless you're like a bigger country and you've got a really good economy. So, um, but we have just got another air. Uh, Sadiatis, Sad Sadiatis, um, we'll just call him Sad. Uh, so Sad Mermnadid, he's a 464, he is uh, like triple the man that his father is, uh, so that is awesome. Hey, but you know what, as a, as a Western sort of old school male, um, and I'm sure I'll cop a lot of flack for saying this, but 16 years old and uh, he's, uh, he's pumping out the airs already. Like, hey, he's doing something right. He's doing something right. You're going to love it. Hume is now actually like the perfect little buffer state, isn't he? He really is. So ultimately what we need to do is we need to take Hume. And we need to put forts right there. So ultimately that's what we need to do. Sure, let's give him some better treatment. treatment let's get there this one's going to take a little bit, a bit longer of magnesia, give them some better treatment, train efficiency production. Um, so what can we do? So we can do a couple um, a couple of these now. So what have we got carrier? That's right, we looked at this one last episode. That's actually not too bad now. Um, it's going to cost us 21 to maintain, but it will give us 64 in revenue. That's okay. Uh, we want to sort of, we, we probably want to save up this uh, this money. So, so this one's going to cost us 20, and it's only going to give us 25. So it's really, it's, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're profit to profit, but. Um, that's really, really sort of low for the amount that we have to invest in it now. So it's better to sort of wait till that province just sort of like builds up a little bit naturally, and then obviously you know because it's probably going to cost us the same amount of money. Um, and I'm not really desperate for the cash at this point in time. So even though the income has dropped significantly, so. So out of this war, if we can get Byzantium and we can get um, Kizikos,
this here. Nice. Well, good for them. down all right so it doesn't look like it's given us any immediate uh, boost that's okay though we've still taken it though and we've got a you know there's a obviously gas in there as well so that's a good way for us to sort of protect against incursions coming across the Isthmus. So, that's not a bad thing. Uh, but then it's also given us like a nice sort of foothold over here on sort of the other side of the 
that way it's going to give us because this is like rich trade territory down in here generally um, so what's that part of that's part of the Phoenician trade route which yeah it's not actually that great at the moment it's actually quite a small one isn't it That's what I'd say. That's probably our best course of action. So we'll start drilling our armies up, um, and then what we'll do is we'll look at sort of coming down here and then sort of take them out, and get a little bit of land of F of Pirindu, and then sort of look at coming through the Ionians. I, I think I think that's going to be a best course of action, um, and then we'll see what happens with uh, Uratu. Maybe Egypt will finally decide to wake up and start doing what Egypt does in every other game and just sort of rampaging everywhere um, and then maybe they will um, they'll come through and they'll wipe out Aratu or maybe Aratu will end up in a war with Babylonia which maybe not because Babylonia looks like they're at war with somebody else were they at war with oh Alam, Idali, Durham, Zari, Samati so it might be uh, might be all over for Arata, uh, for Babylon as well. Uh, so this could be very this could be shaping up to be a very very interesting game over here in this sort of Middle Eastern theatre. Uh, so that's uh, that is kind of like a little bit exciting. So uh, and massive amounts of profit from slavery. So. got another tech so we'll probably wait for that tech to fire and then we'll probably look at ending this episode I think um, but let me know let me let me know in the comment section guys what do you think we should do should we go for the Ionian city-states or should we sort of come down here uh, and there we go we just changed our culture that's pretty good uh, come down here towards um, was I believe it's Lycia and uh, Perindu Let's get a few of these guys built. Um, so we're going to end it here, guys. Um, we've got our tech. Uh, so again, let me know in the comment section, guys, which way should we go? Should we go basically, uh, you know? Uh, make a beeline for the Ionians and knock them out before they are, uh, all their Hellenic techs really start kicking in and they start, you know, getting their, their huge hoplite army techs. Um, or should we sort of come down here and uh, take out uh, Perindu and uh, Lycia next? Um, apart from that, guys, uh, thank you very much for watching. As always, if you're enjoying the content here on the channel, then smash that subscribe button and drop this video a like and leave your thoughts, tips, tricks, uh, all that sort of good stuff in the comment section below. Uh, cheers, mates.